do I think ride share is dead? I think the current system of ride share or the system that we knew, it, it's dead. It's gone. I think these apps got in over their heads. I mean, when they started out, they were pretty small. You know, they were based in California. Then they started spreading other cities. Then they went to other states. Now they're in other countries now. And we've got a lot of different rideshare apps out there to the point where the industry is so diluted with people thinking, you know, I don't need a W-2. I'll just drive. I mean, we've been seeing screenshots of, of how saturated certain markets are. I mean, within that screenshot, there's like 70, 80 cars, probably 100 cars in one screenshot in one area. It's like everybody's becoming a gig worker now. And these apps know that. It's like a drug. If you got crack and everybody's flocking to get some crack, you're going to realize you got a premium product. You don't really have to pay people that much to do ride share anymore. It's a premium product. Everybody wants to leave the W-2s and do ride share because, hey, I got freedom. I could download money today. I can drive 12 hours a day, 24 hours a day if I wanted to. And I can make $2,000 a week if I could just drive 80 hours. Ride share is, is no longer a, a career. It's, it's a circus. And I will say that ride share has become a circus. The reason why is because people are getting the cheapest cars they could find, the dirtiest cars they can find. They don't put a lot of money or effort into cleaning the tires, the wheels. They don't put new custom rims on it. They don't really do anything of quality to be involved in ride share. All you need is an app, a telephone, and some gas or electricity, and you can do ride share. That's how simple it's become. You don't have to have great gear. I mean, this is this is my garage gear. I put a serpentine belt on my uh, Expedition. It was squeaking. It said 90,000 miles, so I just replaced it. It probably never been replaced, so I replaced it. So I got my garage clothes on. But this is what people wear doing ride chair. They drive around in, in raggedy, baggy T-shirts, not taking showers. Cars, they don't. the carpets aren't clean. The seats smell like sweat. And they're out thinking that they're worthy of $100,000 a year in their career. I want to be a $100,000 a year driver, and this is basically what they're wearing, riding around like this. Not a nice shirt. I mean, there are some t-shirts out that are really nice, and I make sure that if anybody's ever gotten a t-shirt from me, it's a higher quality, because I make sure, like these shirts, two $3 shirts, that's it. I mean, you can lay in a garage floor, no problem. People are doing ride chair in this thinking they're worth a hundred thousand dollars i don't know man it's like I've, I've i've been really thinking about the direction we've been going i was excited about ride share for so long and when even when hum came out i was reignited about ride share but even with hum i don't really turn hum on to get the pings i kind of use it for the commercial insurance aspect of it private rides seem to be safer the people are happier to see you they pay more they definitely pay a lot more and they even tip, even though you're making a really good chunk of money, they even tip. That is the direction that rideshare is going. People are learning that rideshare is like the bottom of the barrel, the race of the bottom. Ride service is a race to the top. People are getting better vehicles. People are wearing better clothes. They're wearing shoes that actually go with the clothes they're wearing, not just walking around in flip-flops, sandals, you know, raggedy Chuck Taylors like you've been playing kickball all day in them and thinking you're worth $100,000 a year. People don't understand what's going on in the industry. There are politicians involved now, driving partners, medical service people around, doctor's offices, dental offices, I mean, Medicaid services. There's a lot involved in ride share right now to where the money is not coming to the drivers. There's too many mouths to feed now. The apps have kind of gotten out of hand. First, when it first started, it was drivers linking up with riders, and it was an app saying, I'm going to link you guys up. Then the greed started. Hey, pay us a service fee and you can become one of our driving partners and we'll make sure you can you know, get rides for cheaper because we got drivers that are doing it for cheaper now. Oh, you know, you could use Medicaid and Medicare for rides now. Just be one of our partners and we can find a cheap driver for you. This is what ride share is becoming, a lot of mouths to feed. And we're the earners. The drivers are the earners. We're the ones out here driving to generate the revenue. The revenue not generated any other way. Oh, we do marketing. Cool. Marketing is not revenue generating. Marketing just tells people you have a product. The revenue generators are the actual workers, the earners. 
And now people's cars are looking so beat up, so banged up. Doors not working. Hey, you got to get in on driver's side only and climb across all the way to the passenger side. Serious, people are doing that. My, my passenger door is broken. Somebody broke my handle. You got to get in on driver's side. And they're still driving these cars because they can't afford to get them fixed. They can't even make enough profits because they're taking all these $3, $4, $7 rides for nine miles thinking they're really making good money. And they're not making any money in Roger. There's no quest out there. Even Dara even said, we're doing away with driver incentives because they don't have to do incentives. Like I said, it's crackheads going to crack. You don't have to give an incentive to buy crack. They want to smoke it. They're going to come to you. That's what they do. Ride share. These people want to drive to make a living. They don't want to go to a W-2. And many of them can't hold a W-2. I will tell you that. If they had to go to an interview, they probably wouldn't even get the job. They probably couldn't log in, you know, to a computer network, you know, get all their documents set up right now. They probably couldn't do that. They've been walking, opening up a car door, turning a key or pushing a button and making $8. You know, the first 15, 20 minutes I already made $8 already, man. This is great. This is great. I already made $8. They're making $15 an hour gross, $20 an hour gross, $30 an hour gross. After all your expenses, you're walking out with less than minimum wage. Somebody in the chat said, man, it's like a $15 an hour minimum wage job with overtime is paying better than ride share right now. I said, I agree. I agree. That's why we started doing ride service. We all kind of dropped out of ride share. We're doing ride service. Yeah, we use the apps, but the apps are like a tool. We turn it on. We know who's looking for rides. We know where the events are. We know where to go. So we go take our cars there. We take ourselves there. We go negotiate prices with people there. We don't sit there and let these apps dictate what we're going to make. Hey, Jeff, I'm going to give you $13 for this ride. Uh, take these people 12 miles. It'll take you like, you know, 43 minutes for $13. Meanwhile, they charge this person about $6 a mile. So they're paying almost $60, $70 for this ride, and we're getting 13 out of it. They do that. For people that say, they wouldn't do that, they wouldn't do that. You're not really a driver. You're not looking at what riders are paying. You're not talking to riders. You're not really a driver. If that, what I just said, sounds far-fetched to you, you're not a driver. There are people out there, $198 being paid for a $58 to the driver. That's it. Where's the $140 going? Like I told you, there's a lot of mouths to feed. You got to pay engineers. You got CEOs. You got shareholders. You got politicians. You got all these driving partners. There's a lot of mouths to feed now. It used to not be like this. So if you think rideshare is ever going to get any better, I think it's already had its heyday. We're looking at the decline of rideshare. It's going to come to the point where people who are driving are going to be the lowest of the low. And I'm saying that for real. Whether you're driving Uber Black, driving Lyft Black, if you're driving basic tiers or whatever, you're going to be the lowest paid of the low because riders are noticing what's going on and riders are paying us directly. I did two rides today and I made enough doing those two rides that I didn't have to do any more rides for the day. I took a nap. I went to sleep. I said, you know, I'm doing pretty well. I just went in there, you know, did what I had to do, my errands and everything, did the, uh, the parts on the truck. I went to sleep. Well, I went and bought the parts, and then I had to do them tonight. That's why I'm still wearing this. And I'm sitting there like, if I was doing ride share, to make what I made today, I made, what, $160 today, $160. I would have had to drive at least 20 trips to make $160, because that's how they're paying. It used to, we used to average about $10 a trip doing basic tiers, about $10 a trip. Then it dropped down to about $7, $8 a trip for basic tiers. On XL, y'all see my XL rides, $3, XL, $4, $6. These are XL. Using that big truck, five, six people jumping that big truck for 11 bucks. What do I do? Nah, I'll, I'll, let, I'll do it for $25. I'm not doing it for $11. i will do it for $25. Four people in that big truck driving, leaving a really busy area, surging crazy. Four people in that truck, $19. Area surging like crazy. I say, you know what? I'll do it for $40. I'll do it for $40. That's ride service. I'm not taking these what these apps are paying. And any driver out there that's taking what these apps are paying, you're just putting nails in your own coffin. Because they're going to go driverless. Not only are they going to go driverless, they're going to use more illegals. They're going to use more illegals because this is who's leaving certain countries, coming here, working for pennies on a dollar versus what we're making. And the apps know this. And the apps are like, if we want to generate profit margins, if we want to feed all these mouths, we have to look at drivers, not as business people, not as investors into this industry. 
But as simple-minded earners, they're just simple-minded earners. They don't think, they don't analyze, they just drive, they just stay busy. They don't know math, they don't know business. They're simple-minded people who just want to stay busy all day. That's how they view a driver. We can make $120,000 without using the apps. We can make $120,000 doing private rides. We can pay for our own insurance at that price. If you're paying $700 a month in insurance, 12 months, I mean, what is that? $8,400 $8, a year? $8,400. $8,400 a year. But you're making $120,000. You can do your own fuel. You can have cars paid off. Because if you're driving on the apps, on your 1099, they're putting you made $140,000. But when you say, man, I only made $56,000 in my bank account, coming through my bank account, how did they say I made $140,000 when only $56,000 went through my bank account? Exactly, because you're the earner. You're the simple-minded driver. You're not really a business person. You're not doing analytics. You're not reconciling what they're doing by going and say, hey, what is this rider paying? What is this driver getting? What's the percentage? Oh, something's wrong here. 198 being paid, 58 to the driver. $140 profit margin on the ride where I'm getting the, the least of the profit out of all of it, and I'm doing the most of the work out of all of it. Because the engineers got to get paid. The executives and the staff got to get paid. Their overhead has to be paid. All their driving partners got to be paid. The politicians got to be paid. Ride share is not what it used to be. You got to just wake up and realize we're getting played. We're not getting paid. If you're not out there converting rides, if you're not out there talking to people as an independent contractor, letting them know who you are, business cards, putting ads out there on Facebook, Instagram, maybe next door you know, laundromats, putting ads in laundromats. You're missing out on a huge chunk of revenue. And these executives are like, these people aren't smart enough to advertise to themselves. They're not aggressive enough to advertise, assertive enough to realize how much they're even worth. We can play these people. We don't got to pay these people. They're going to sit around with poster boards and popsicle sticks and protest, but I bet they end up in that car later today taking that $11 ride for 22 miles. Taking that $3 XL for three miles. I mean, they were sending me $4 XLs for two miles from a busy area. $4 XLs. I'm like, I could just charge the person $20 and they'll be okay with it. Downtown Scottsdale, the party district. We got these golf carts. I got a golf cart sitting in my garage right there. They got golf carts. And each ride in the golf cart is about $25. Even if you got to go two blocks. You're paying $25 for that golf cart. But for this big truck sitting behind me, $4 comes to me. That's it. $4. For the same trip, you get $25 in that golf cart. I'm getting $4 for this big truck. Ride share is a joke. It's turning out to be a joke. So if you ain't out there talking to riders, converting, if you listen to channels telling you, just stay on the apps. Do it the right way. This is the broke way to do it. If you want to end up broke, and coming back to those channels, hey man, can you put out put out my GoFundMe on your next podcast? Let people know I need help. No, we've been giving you the tools to go out and make the money. You shouldn't need a GoFundMe. We're giving you the tools to go out there and make the money. We're telling you exactly where the money is in the community. We're telling you how to get it from their pocket to your pocket. How to save them money and make you more money. But instead, you want to play the game. I'll drive for the apps. Well, guess what? Send your GoFundMe link to Uber. Send your GoFundMe link to Lyft, to DoorDash. That's where you send your GoFundMe link to. And you tell everybody in the building, hey, all you employees in there, I was a driver on you apps. I was paying you guys. You know, I was the earner earning all you guys' salaries. Can you guys donate to me? I'm the one you guys are, are getting all the money from. I'm the one doing 80 hours a week. That's who you send your GoFundMe to. You don't send it to another driver. Because we're trying to educate you on how to do this. We're telling you how to do this. And you looking at us like, whatever. I ain't doing it. I'm doing it my way. Do it your way. But when your way don't go as planned, don't start no cash app up putting it inside of Facebook groups. Hey, man, can everybody help me out, man? Me and my wife are in a bad way. You, did you convert right now? I wasn't converting no rides, man. I, that's too risky. Well, look at yourself right now. You don't think being broke is a risk? You don't think being homeless is a risk? Going hungry is a risk? Not being able to afford repair is a risk? The only risk you talk about, oh, if I get into a wreck, that's the only risk you talk about. There's a lot of other risks in life other than getting in the wreck. I got five cars out here. 
all of them running right. When you know how to drive and this is what you do as a professional, you ain't worried about it. What I'm an amateur at is life. Because life will throw you curveballs every day, all day. I can drive, but life changes. These roads really don't. You just got to know how to navigate them. But if you can't navigate life, you're going to end up setting up a GoFundMe. You're going to end up telling people how, you know, you need new tie rods. You're going to end up telling people how your engine just went out and you just need to set up a GoFundMe. All you need is $3,500 because you already got $2,000 saved up. This is what I'm talking about. Ride share is not paying you. Get it right. Get it through your head. Start making a difference right now. Change your position and you change your stance in the game. Not a lot of people are changing their stance in the game. They're playing with these apps, thinking these apps one day are going to be like, hey, since you've been driving for so long and your AR is so high, here's extra money. The higher your AR, the stupider you are. They know that. Why do you think they're paying you so low?